Hey everyone, we're back again. Uh, just want to say thanks for watching the first video. Gonna try and be rolling at least one of these a week um, while I have time until my season kicks off. This week though, we're not gonna do something new. We're actually gonna go back on an old pattern. Um, I'm gonna alternate these a bit um, so I can filter in some of my stuff that's a little bit more well known. Today we're gonna tie the ice pick. Uh, Brian Weiss recommended we start with that one, although I would probably pick the headbanger, but we'll do that at a later date. Um, we're going to do the articulated ice pick today. I'm going to talk about some finer nuances with this particular pattern. I'm also going to show you some other ways, or uh, some different hooks that I'm using now. It's like anything, you know, uh, new materials, new things come out, which can make the process better. Um, I'm going to go through all that, talk about how I tie this particular fly now, and now how I can tie this in a variety of sizes, even articulated from something that's about two and a half inches long all the way up to stuff that's in that six inch range. This one right here is roughly four. If I had one size to pick out of all the articulated ones that I like to cast and fish with, this would probably be right in that wheelhouse. Um, I will talk to you a little bit about you know, the single variation of this. And also, and I'll do some close-ups on this so you can see it, for those of you who don't like to fish these fish skulls, you know, this is a love-hate thing. Some people love them, some people hate them. There's definitely a time and a place to have a, a fly with a little bit of weight on there. But if you don't like to fish that, I'll talk to you a little bit also as well as how you can tie this without that. And you can see I've used a dumbbell eye here. And on this particular pattern, it's very, very reminiscent of uh, Mike Schmidt's meal ticket. Um, I would be totally remiss by not, you know, talking about that because it's the same style head here. Same body, obviously this isn't articulated, but is essentially the same fly. That's all the ice pick really is, is a marrying of that style fly with um, a new age turn on the zonker. The zonker is a great fly, but there were some things that I kind of like to have changed on it, which I was able to do and add in with some new materials in this here. But essentially all this is is a bunny strip fly. It's a really, really good one. Um, it fishes well, pretty easy to tie. But you can also, it garnered some other inspiration from some other patterns from some other people. Um, there's nothing I can't stand more is when people don't really give credit where credit's due with stuff. Look, I'm not an inventor of a lot of these things. I'm just kind of like a guy that likes to tinker at the vice, think a little bit outside the box, and then take some older ideas and kind of push them a little bit. Um, you know, we always can learn from, you know, friends, past peers, things of that nature. So... There's some definite influence here with this style fly into the construction of the ice pick. Um, enough of me talking, like I said, I don't like being in front of the camera. Um, I'd rather just go into the whole steps. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go from here. I'm going to show you how to tie this articulated one, talk about some of the new hooks that we're using, and then we'll go from there. All right, let's have at it. All right, guys, first things first. The first most, I guess you could say, the newest thing that's on here is the rear hook that we're using on here. This is actually a new hook. Pretty sure Kelly had a lot to do with this. It's a 90 degree vertical eye um, wide gap streamer hook. This is essentially probably the best answer to setting up your wire connection for a rear trailer hook because now you've got a ring eye that's in this particular, it's vertical, so that when you run the wire through it, it makes it super simple to create your articulation point on the back of this fly. So we're going to be using this for the rear. I use this on a lot of them now that they're, they're available. Um, it kind of solves a lot of the problems that are out there. So first thing we're going to do, um, and you can use whatever color, we're going to actually tie this guy today, this exact fly that you see here. So this is an olive and white articulated ice pick. Um, this rear hook's a number five. The front hook we're going to be using is going to be an Airx. Um, 610 number one so I'm gonna start with some white thread on this the reason I'm using white is because I have um, a white underbelly on this guy so I'm just gonna start by adding my thread on there so this is a Vivis 140 get my thread right down to where the bend starts on that hook and then what I'm gonna do is if you recall when I first started tying these and these have been this fly has been replicated multiple times and like I told you before in the beginning of this this is uh, you know my take on a modern uh, zonker um, and my biggest problem with zonkers especially the commercially tied ones is the rabbit strips on them are just way too short so you get a heck of a lot more um, 
movement out of a fly with a longer tail, but the downside to that is it would wrap. So what I did is we're going to use some 30 pound straight mono here and we're going to build a loop on the back of this guy to kind of help prevent this thing from wrapping. Once you kind of put that in place there, and what you've seen here is I've basically taken the thread and the mono and I've wrapped it down one side of the hook. Um, by doing that, I'm also going to give myself a nice little base a flat base which is going to go right in line with the shank of the hook to affix my rabbit strip. Then I'm going to take and make a loop on the other end, roughly the size of the gap. So whatever I have left here just kind of cut off. And that's going to hold my tail up in place. So I'm going to take loose wraps while trying to keep that mono on either side of the hook shank. And you'll see it's going to want to chase itself if you go a little too loosely just like it's doing there but you're just basically going to put pressure on the opposite side so I loosely kind of catch it like you see here get all the way down to where my tie end point starts take one turn underneath so you can kind of see it looks something like this if your mono is starting to chase itself around you can just take some non serrated pliers and just flatten it out just like that and that'll keep that mono on either side of the hook shank just like you see here Boom. And then I'm going to wrap some more thread right back over it again and then work my way back down to the other side. Once I've done that, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take two marabou plumes. And I've already kind of pre-selected these. I want some that are relatively bushy. And we're going to use those for the tail. Now the tail is going to be roughly the length of this, a little longer than the shank of the, the rear hook. So I typically try to peel away the stuff that I'm not going to use, measure it up, transfer it to here, take a couple turns over the back, lift up on those two stems, advance my thread, and then wrap back over them, and then I trim my butt sections of that. reason I do that is that gives me a nice uniform underbody. Remember, everything when you tie these is all about uniformity. If you got some stray fibers in there, it's fine. Stop your thread right back there at the base. And now you're going to tie in your wing. Your wing on this is rabbit strip. You can use barred, whatever. I like the barred on this myself. So I kind of measure this real quick. And then I'm going to go in here, pull the fiber back, just like you see here. So I'm right down to the bare hide. And I'm going to pinch that between my forefinger, my pointer finger, and my thumb. So I keep it on top of the hook. And I'm just going to take one turn, two, with a little bit more pressure, and then three and then advance my thread in front of it. And I'll typically put a half hitch right there just in case I walk away from this thing. All right. Next thing you're gonna do, this is the most important piece of this. When you go to cut these rabbit strips, what you don't wanna do is go in there with your scissors. Cause if you go in there with your scissors, you're gonna, you're gonna cut the hair inevitably and you're gonna have this bare spot at the back of that rabbit strip. So what you wanna do is take yourself one of these nice little double edged razors and I want my hair to kind of go a little bit past where the marabou is. So I'm just going to come in at where the hide is and just touch that hide. Now what I've done is I have zero waste pretty much. I'll have a little bit here, but you, you know you can really waste less of these rabbit strips when you tie in this manner and cut them that way. So keep that in mind. I know these things aren't cheap. So if you really want your materials to go a long way, that's the best way to do it. Next thing I'm going to do, and in the original ice pick, I used to make my own brushes. So I would take ice dubbing or some sort of flashy material, some of that, and then I would spin it into a wire brush myself. Um, I'm all about ease and simplicity, and now you can buy these sparkle brushes that EP sells. There's some other companies putting some stuff out there with brushes. The downside to things is, and I'm just going to kind of show you the difference between a good brush in this hand and one that's way overdressed. So this guy over here has got way too much material in it. Um, this one is going to make an exorbitantly bulky fly. I want something that's still going to be able to kind of break through the water column a bit with minimal amounts of flash. So there's definitely a fine line between using too much and not enough or just the right amount. So um, when the first EP Sparkle brushes came out, they were more like these guys right here. So yeah, you could tie more flies with them, but you're also pulling a lot of material out. These are about where you want them. So the trick is, is you're going to tie this in on the near side, just like you see here. 
wrap over that bare wire, go just up to a point, about an eye's length behind the eye. And I'm going to do this all without the rotary function, but if you do it with the rotary function, it's faster. What I did before in the last video with the AOD, you kind of saw what I did with this brush, is I brush everything to one direction. So I'm wrapping it like a hackle, and you're going to be wrapping that sparkle brush in open spiraled wraps. They're probably about an eighth of an inch apart. Okay, that's going to help that material kind of bleed through and breathe right up to where my thread is. You don't want it super, super tight. You'll burn through a brush on a fly, and you'll have way too much flash on there, and that's not what you want. Take a couple turns over the front, over the back. We're going to bring our thread back over the butt ends of that. Now be mindful, that's, that's stainless steel wire. Don't use your good scissors. Use your crappy scissors on these. And the other thing is, you can also, if you don't have a clean cut, you'll see me, I take my finger or I'll take the edge of my scissor and I'll just flatten that burr down. Because if you get a fray in your thread, it's going to shred the thread and then you're going to have a total mess. Next thing I'm going to do, you can kind of see the flash is kind of a disaster. I'm just going to take my brush and do that and brush it out. And then I take my two fingers and I'm just going to pull it downward. So now all my flash is going in one direction. And if you look at it, it's facing rearward. So when this fly gets stripped through the water, it's going that way. Next thing I'm going to do is now I'm going to lay my rabbit strip right over this guy. Just like you see here. So I'll take one, two, three turns over it. And then I'm just going to trim the butt end of that rabbit fur. Same thing with that. And now I want to make sure that this is cinched down there relatively tightly. So I'm going to put several more tighter wraps on there. Half hitch it again. And now I'm going to finish this section of the fly off with just a slight collar. Now this one, because it's olive and yellow, or olive and white rather, I'm going to use a very, very little amount of olive laser dub on the top. And you could do these two together if you want, but I feel I have more control when I do them separately. And then a little bit of white on the bottom. You can invert it once, twice, peel it back, just like you see here. Take your whip finish, through whip finish, All right? Put some resin on those thread wraps really nicely. Hit it with a torch. And then you can kind of brush them out too if you'd like. And now you've got the rear section of your fly. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your beetle on. You know I'm a beetle on guy, 19 thousandths, or 19 strand rather, 0.018, 46 millimeter. Cut yourself about a three inch section of it. And then we're just going to run it right through the eye of the hook, like here. Bring the two ends together and then kink it. Once you've done that, then you're going to take your little bead, got a nice little 3D bead on here. I'm just going to thread it right through that guy right there. And then we're good. We'll set that aside. Now, if you were just tying this in a um, single version, like this particular one I was telling you there, then we would obviously tie in our dumbbell eye, put more dubbing on either end, call it a day. Same thing with the fish mask, etc. But we're doing this in an articulated version. So I'm going to show you how we're going to set that up next. All right. Okay, now we're back. So now I have a number one Airx uh, T Trout Predator 610 streamer hook in the vise. If you're looking for the numbers, this is it. That's a number four, but the one in the vise is a number one. What I will tell you this though, I've really fallen in love with this streamer hook, but if you're a guy that likes to tie with these fish skulls, you're going to run into some issues because the eyes on these hooks are relatively larger because the wire diameter is a little bit bigger than some others. Um, so you're going to run into some issues with putting those fish skulls on on some of these um, so keep that in mind. This is the one we're going to be using today is a small medium. It fits just barely over the eye of this guy, of this number one. But if I want to go down to a size small, I'm not going to be able to get that on even a number two on this style, style hook. So in that case, I'm probably going to go back and use a Gamakatsu B10S. Uh, you've heard me talk about this numerous times before. I don't really prescribe to one particular hook company. 
Um, I, because I tie so many different flies for so many different people, and a lot of times I can't always get the hooks that I want, I have to have options, and options are good. So I'm giving you a different option here. Um, this particular hook is one of my new favorites that I like to fish with um, for a variety of reasons. But I just wanted you to know that when you do try to use some of these skulls, you want to make sure that the, that, that skull is going to fit over that hook eye or else you basically just tie a fly that you can't utilize some of those materials with. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to go right back in. We're going to reattach our thread and we're going to bring our thread all the way back to right about where the bend starts. Now back before when we used to tie these, you know, we always had to kind of bend the wire a certain way and you'd get a little bit of a turn in it because of we were using a horizontal eyed hook. But now that we've got a vertical eye hook, it makes it very, very easy because now the wire stays on either side of it when we go to tie this in. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take two, three loose turns over that wire right on the back. And essentially what you're going to do, and you'll see here as I invert the hook, you want to keep those two pieces of wire side by side on top of the hook. And this new vertical eye um, wide gap streamer hook allows you to do that. It makes your connections work really well and you're going to get all kinds of crazy articulation out of this. Once we've taken those couple of turns, and you'll see i got a little too much wire here, so we're just going to kind of pull this in place. A lot of people ask about beads for these and why they're there. They're a spacer, number one and they're to kind of keep the tail in the right position. But you don't want this cinched right up against the eye of that rear hook or else you basically just defeated the purpose of your articulated fly. So you want to have some space there. I use as a general rule of thumb about the same um, width of the, of the bead that I have on there. That's going to give me some uh, the action I want. Some people like it a little tighter because it's going to prevent it from fouling a little bit. But that's a whole other topic we'll get into at another date. This is the way that I like to tie them. So once I've got that in place, and I'm just basically going to take my thread and work it down the hook all the way to the eye. Cut that off there. Like I said, use your bad scissors. While keeping that wire right on top of the hook shank, I'm just going to basically coat it. And I'm going to take two rounds of thread here. Each one you can see I'm getting progressively tighter. When I say rounds, I'm going to go up and over it once, come back, and then go back up and over it again. Each time... I, I traverse this, and you notice I'm not doing super, super tight, close wrap thread wraps. They're kind of open, but I'm coming right back to the point of origin where I started. Boom, put a half hitch on there. That's not coming out, and my tail's in a good position. Once I've got that in place and it's locked into where I want it, I'm going to take my clip, clip that out of the way, so I'll unhook myself. Now we're just basically going to be repeating the steps. So I'm going to put some marabou on here. This is just to kind of give it a nice little collar in the middle and a little bit of mid middle movement and fill in this articulated space. About five or six turns over that. Trim the butt section or the butt ends of that up. marabou off. And now we're just going to wrap it. I take, depending on how um, thick this marabou plume is, some of them I only take like three or four turns. Other ones like this guy, I might use like five or six. Okay, once I get that in place, two, three over the front, one, one over the front rather, three in the back. And I kind of just kind of tease this stuff out a bit. And then I'm going to wrap my thread back over it. And that's going to actually help secure that marabou fiber rearward, but it's also going to strengthen it so it doesn't pull right out. Once I've kind of come back to that point where the barb on the hook is, now I'm going to reattach my rabbit strip. You don't want this super, super long hanging off and bleeding into the rear. You only really need about a half inch piece. So what I do is I go in here, just kind of peel the fiber away or the hairs away from the hide, as you see here. Just like I did on the rear section, take one turn, two turns, three turns, advance in front, trim it off, tie it, reattach my sparkle brush. If you're dealing with a section that's often being cut off, I cut the fibers right down to the wire. That way I got something that the thread's going to kind of 
stick into and purchase. And then I'm going to stop my thread, tie it off so there's not an issue. So I'm about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch behind the eye. And then same thing, I am going to wrap this sparkle brush after I've kind of brushed those fibers rearward on open consecutive one eighth inch turns until I get to my thread. So I get to there, take my scissors, kind of come in here, split those fibers apart as you see, take three turns over the top of the wire, couple in front, trim it off, take the edge of your scissor, flatten out that burr, wrap back over it again. And then I'm going to brush it down just like I did the first time. Brush it, pull it. Now we're going to take our rabbit strip, pull it right over the top, and what you can do here is kind of peel it right down to where the fiber is, hold it in place, take one turn, two turns, three turns, go right in there, cut it off. And now I'm going to just put some progressively heavier turns of thread on there, put it in front, half hitch it off. Now when I go to do the front of this, you're going to want more material up front. I know we use a sparse amount of this olive laser dub and white laser dub for the rear collar but for this one we're going to put more and the reason being is you want a little more mass up front that's going to help make the tail of this fly swim and kick. So I take more of the olive, tie it in the center like we did before, three turns, right, with keeping pressure on it and then just fold it rearward. Vance your thread in front, half hitch it, take your brush, kind of brush it out. Some of that material is going to come out, all right? Looks something like that. Now we're going to take our white. Same thing. Take about half of what you think you need. Okay? Invert it. Tie it in the center. Once, twice, three times. Fold it rearward. Advance your thread. Half hitch. Pull it off. Now you can brush it out. Just like we did before. Now you've got a nice olive and white separation. So you have a belly and a top. I like to put a little bit of red in here. There's a couple different ways you can do it. Same thing, I'm going to take a little bit of red laser dub, just like we did before. Less is more. Tie it in the center. One turn, two turns. Whew. Pull it right back. Advance my thread, and now I'm going to actually whip finish this. Once, twice, three times. Boom. Trim it off. There you go there. You could fish that fly just like that if you wanted. It'll absolutely catch fish, has no eyes on it, doesn't matter. Fish will like it. You'll catch lots of fish on these. But if you want to really finish it off and put one of these heads on, that's what we're going to do next. Alright, so last thing we're going to do now is we're going to put one of these heads on here. So, this like I said is a small medium fish skull. I've already affixed the eyes. I suggest you do that ahead of time. It just makes it a heck of a lot easier when you go to put these things on there. So what I try to do is I try to pre-fit it, and there's a definite top and a bottom on these. If you take a look at it from the front, the side that has, if you look at it, it's got a bevel to it, and there's more material. Same thing if you look at it from the inside. On the bottom, there's in the top, that's going to help kill your fly. I can't tell you, every time I look online, and I'm sure a lot of other tires feel the same way, when they see people tie these things and they post pictures of their flies, which I think is awesome, it gives everybody, you know, feel cool and excited about what you've done. But then they go and they put these heads on these things incorrectly. And now it's on upside down and the fly is tracking completely the wrong way. So there's the definitive top and the bottom on this, okay? So you want to make sure you put it on the right way. So the first thing we want to do is just kind of size it up. You might have to use a little bit of elbow grease to get this bad boy on there. You want to give yourself enough room so that you can reattach your thread and put a thread dam in front of this, just like you see here. That's also giving me zero gaps, so now I've got all my hair right where I want it to be. And that looks just about right. You can add a little super glue in there if you want, but what I found is once you've kind of put this thread dam on here in the front of it and you've tied it correctly, it's not going anywhere. Um, Kelly likes to drop. Uh, super glue down in there that works really really well too that thing's not going anywhere then you don't have to put a thread dam I like the th looks of the thread dam because I think it kind of complements the fly off a little bit a little bit nicer once you kind of got that and you build your little pyramid in front 
trim it off. I like to coat the thread with some bone dry Solaris for starters. Hit it with a torch. And then the last little thing I like to do is I actually like to overcoat the eyes because these things are going to fall out. So I'll take some thin and just put a drop on there just so it goes right over. The eyes, same thing. Hit it again. Boom. Now those eyes are going to stay in there a heck of a lot longer. Same thing on the other side. And I finished it off. And that's essentially the fly. So now I've got myself a nice little articulated ice pick. As you can see here, they put the hook in my finger, which ain't good. You've got this nice articulated fly with a free swinging tail that's going to be at the mercy of the current or whatever you try to manipulate it. And that's, like I said, this one's roughly four inches long. This is kind of like right in the wheelhouse of what I like to fish the most. Colors on these are all over the place. You can do whatever you want. Um, I'm a big tan and ginger kind of guy, but there's all different kinds. This one works really, really well. You could add a rainbow stripe down the side. You name it. That's the fly. A couple different materials are in there. Like I said, throwing an old one back in here. This one's been replicated a variety of different ways with some additions added to it, like rubber legs. Give it a different name. Whatever. Not going to get into that. Um, but in the end, this is basically a modified zonker that's articulated. That's it. Like I said, there's a lot of different ways you can tie it. I hope you garnered some information off this. If you got any questions on it, drop them in the comments and be glad to answer them for you. Good luck and happy tying out there.